Hi, I'm Anthony from Sydney Backyard Veggies. Now, this week's gonna be a big week for me, a lot of harvesting in the garden. But the first thing I'm gonna be doing today is just going through the last of my jalapeno patch. Uh, these, it's late March now, and so it's just getting a tad bit cold for them. But the late season uh, heat wave we had in March um, really set all the f uh, flowers on um, in my jalapenos. So as a result, I've got a very, um, I've got a bumper crop of jalapenos which I need to go through and harvest. Um, I've got eight plants here. These were planted in late September. Uh, they started producing around uh, mid-November, early December, but they've been great all season. Uh, I had a few problems with fruit flies early in the piece, around January, but after that, after the fruit flies have left, they've been doing quite well. Um, so as long as you keep them well uh, watered and fertilized, um, they produce. So I'm gonna go through and harvest, see what I can find. Okay, so I've gone through and did my first harvest through the crop. Um, there was actually a lot more crop on the plants than I thought there would be. Um, a lot of smaller fruit as well. So what I've done is I've just gone and harvested most of the bigger fruit. I might have to leave these for another, another two weeks or so just to let the smaller fruit ripen. But I'm not expecting to get much more out of that. So I just want to share with everyone. This is the, the basket full of jalapenos that I've got so this is a I mean I would say this is a great harvest I've got, actually got two containers here just I couldn't fit it all in the one but I've got some really really good sized fruit uh, we're talking you know hand sized pieces of fruit which are perfect for jalapeno poppers and the like a lot of my fruit here will become cowboy candy uh, it's essentially a sugar based uh, vinegar solution and it's a sweeter sweeter jalapeno that you can use on your burgers and your sandwiches, but it's actually quite nice and we go through a lot of it. Um, what I'm gonna do now is probably gonna give them another two or three weeks, these plants, um, just depending on what the weather does as we go into April and May. I'm hoping it stays just warm enough to get that last crop off it. I, I won't be overwintering these plants. Uh, look, we don't get uh, frost in Sydney, so I could in theory them, let them be. I prefer to start with new plants in the start of the, you know, in the start of spring. So I'll, so I'll, I'll remove these and I'll make space for more winter crops like brassicas and peas and the like. So these will be another three weeks. I'll come through, do a final harvest, and then I'll take them out and start planting something, something new in winter. So I'm over at my broccoli patch and after much anticipation, it's finally ready to start being harvested. Uh, these plants have been in the ground for about 50 days now. They were planted in early Feb and the heads now uh, the right size to be harvested. So I'm gonna go through and look at which heads I need to harvest and which ones can last for a few more days. There are heads of different sizes, uh, depending on which part of the patch you're in. I find that um, the ones closer to the sun tend to be a lot bigger, but which is fine. It just allows me to stagger the um, harvest, which is a good thing, not having to do with a glut. So I'm just going to go through, have a look around and see which ones are right to go. When I come to harvest my broccoli, what I look for is actually a, a firm head where the curds haven't started separating from each other. I find that once the curds start separating, that's at that point where the actual head is actually starting to deteriorate, uh, actually going to flower. So always looking to make sure that the curds are tight, that there's no real separation, there is no slight colouring in the uh, head. Uh, you can even almost, if you start seeing flowers forming, if you start seeing the curds separating, that's a sign that it's gone over. Still edible, but it's gone over. So I, I am looking at these plants daily and checking their heads. And as soon as they're ready to go, I gotta harvest them. So when I harvest broccoli, I tend not to keep them for their side shoots. This variety does put out side shoots, but for the three to four week wait that I need to wait to have that crop, my personal preference is to remove the plant once it's been harvested and feed the, the leaves and the stumps to the chickens as part of their feeding ration and just make the space ready for new seedlings that I've got coming through at the moment. So I'd 
you can hold on and they do produce some nice side shoots but for the time it takes for them to produce i find it's uh more beneficial for my in my context to actually just get rid of the the rest of the plant and just make space for the new planting so that's how i make sure that i've got a consistent supply of broccoli throughout my growing season today's harvest uh, i've got seven heads this time around um they're a good size i'll put them in the fridge now let's put them in the cold water first just to cool them off and then they go into the fridge uh, for storage Yeah, so this morning I decided to come out and harvest most of my Wombok crop. A lot of it was starting to rot in the ground. I found that a lot of the rain that we were having lately was causing the hearts on some of them to, to rot. So I made the call to save the crop. I've decided to harvest it. Um, I've gotten 10 good heads here at the moment. Uh, I, I've picked each, um, each plant and I've taken out the outside leaves, which will go to the chicken so it won't be wasted but the actual heart of the Wombok is what we want to eat. So just looking at what I've got at the moment, it's actually really nice looking, good size, good firmness to it. So definitely this is something that I will grow again. Um, I generally plant this from early autumn, last planting say in May, June at the latest. The idea is, is that you want it to form a head while it's still warm, while the so um, soil's still warm but not uh, leave it too long, so it's forming ahead during um, late winter, where it will be a little more likely to pull. So, this, so these will go to family and friends. I'm gonna come and clean this area out now and, and we'll plant in this spot cauliflower. So I'm gonna do it through now, give these a wash, take all the leftover leaves off and feed them to the chickens, and then yeah, move on to my next job. Uh, I'm at, over at my last planting of green beans. I planted these out in January as seedlings. It actually was an accidental planting. I was trying to uh, test some soil that I'd brought in. Germinated really well to the point where I planted them out. And at the moment I've got a, a great crop of beans that have come through. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through, do my first harvest. Uh, I wouldn't go be planting, I wouldn't be planting uh, beans this late in the season but it's nice to be able to harvest them this late uh, in March so I'm going to go through and harvest them all now and see how much we end up with okay so I've just gone through and harvested all the beans and they're looking a bit the, the bean plants are looking a bit knocked around but they should be fine I've um, harvested a, a solid bucket of beans as you can just see right there so they, these will go inside I'll give them a, a, a light soak in water just to get the heat off. And then once I've done that, I will let them dry and then I'll bag them. And that will last for a week or two in the fridge, no problem. Um, but we'll get through them before they go they go bad or slimy. So really happy with that. There's a few more beans in here. I might see if I can get them to put out a second flush, but probably it's probably too late to do that in the season. But once these are done, I'll, these will be going out and I'll be planting more peas in this location. So all in all, I, um, a good crop I've probably got you know over a kilo kilo and a half of beans here so quite happy with that <laughs> 